Kia ora everyone, good morning. It's day 36 today, I cannot believe it. It's the start of week six. So today we are starting off here from John and Casey's place. It's about three kilometers further up the road um, than the um, other trail walkers camp at the bottom of this road. So that just allowed us to shorten today a little bit. Today is gonna be a long day, about 32 kilometers today, unfortunately. But I have it on good authority from Julia, who's up ahead of me, that it only took her about eight and a half hours. We did get a little bit of a storm last night, but the tent held up wonderfully, despite the um, strong winds and lots and lots of rain. I didn't get wet inside, but it is unfortunately soaked this morning. But hopefully I can stop somewhere along the way to dry it out a little bit. Hopefully it's an easy-ish 32 kilometers into Waitomo. Um, but if not, I guess we just deal with it along the way. And you can see me very well, but it is raining again. I'm trying to get about 10 today before taking a little break. We do have a river to cross today, which is a little bit worrying. Because it says that if there has been a lot of rain, um, might have to wait for it to go down. I'm not too sure yet, I'll wait and see when we get there. Quite slippery this little track here. It's actually really pretty too. Great ferns. <laughs> so it's not been like this the whole way, really, really overgrown, but uh, yeah, it's just a bit annoying when you can't see where you're trying to put your feet down. Whoops, like that. But so far I haven't gone over. <laughs> Maybe it won't be very long. That is Mount Peronia in the distance there. And the rest of the Waikato. Up this way. Panoramic views up here. A plane over there doing some spraying. The little sheep with the black legs and faces. Gosh, the views from up here today are just incredible. I'm just waiting for some sign of Ruapehu or Narahoi or Tongariro somewhere, someday, very soon. I'm going to catch a glimpse of them and it's going to be fantastic. Got so mesmerized by the view, we missed the big orange triangle. <laughs> yep. One of the best things about staying at John and Casey's place last night was that their grass there, their lawn, was absolutely chock a block full of chamomile. 
grass all last night in my tent. I just had this wonderful aroma of chamomile and I think uh, that's why I got such a great sleep last night and today even just walking through some of these sections, this section that we're on at the moment I've just noticed that there's lots and lots of chamomile all through here as well. So just the aroma, I wish it was smell-o-vision because it's just such a beautiful, beautiful aroma. This is our stream crossing for the day. That was an interesting little rest break. Sitting there for about uh, five minutes or so, and then three people turned up on horses. It was mum and dad and daughter. Mum and dad disappeared off the stream, off up the stream with the horses, and daughter stayed behind. And uh, the horse that she was with was a bit spooked. And uh, yeah, that was a little bit scary. I'm not really a horse person, so. But of course, the main problem is that they have completely churned up the track. So it's gonna be very difficult, much more difficult walking along it than it otherwise would have been. Um, and also we were supposed to collect some water from the stream and uh, we hadn't had a chance to do that yet before the horses turned up and of course they went upstream. I didn't really want to get any water from downstream stream of them. Paul managed to go across the stream a little bit and get some water from a waterfall over there but I didn't want to get my feet wet again. So. Um, from here I think it's about 11 kilometres or something like that into Waitomo. So a couple of hours maybe. It's going to mean a late arrival at 6 o'clock-ish or something but I just want to get into camp now bit over it today. It's been a beautiful day, it's been really really lovely, um, but yeah. I have no idea how I'm going to get through this. Might have had a chance before the horses came through. I am finally, I think, nearing the end of this little bush track. Yep, here's the road end here. So a few kilometres from here and I'll be into Waitomo, which is really exciting. It means I've nearly finished my 32 kilometre day, which is crazy. I'm excited to get to camp tonight. I need to do some laundry. I need to get my tent up so it can dry out a little bit. I did get it out at the stream just before and try to dry it out, but uh, I think inside it's still going to be a little bit damp. So that there is home for tonight, the Waitomo Top Ten Park. Oh, I can't wait to get over there, have a shower, cook some dinner. I'm very hungry, and hopefully do some laundry. So I made it to Waitomo. Really, really awesome day today actually for the most part. I'm just enjoying sitting here soaking in the hot tub. I mean, I'm not actually in the hot tub, I'm sitting on the side. Just with my feet in the water. But it feels so good. My legs and my feet are so sore today. This is gonna do me wonders for tomorrow. Yeah, I was quite surprised at how easily I got through today actually. Did the first 15 kilometers um, basically with no rests and then did another 10-ish kilometers. The last seven or so were a little bit tough uh, but mainly that was due to a road walk into Waitomo that was a little bit hard after a long long day on the feet. I think I was walking for 10 and a half hours today. I've done my laundry, I've got my tent up, I have my feet in some hot water and I'm showered and I'm fed and I am ready for bed. So good night everybody and I will see you tomorrow. Kia ora, good morning. It's day 37 today and I'm leaving Waitomo this morning and heading over to Tikwiti. I have heard tell that it's a little bit slippery so that could slow me down but it's a beautiful day and I am looking forward to spending most of it hopefully under the cover of the forest. It's quite a cold one as well last night so Waitomo sits in a bit of a valley. It did make it quite cold but my tent was pitched so that it was nicely in the sun this morning so it dried out nicely. Unfortunately 
east today, the White Island Volcano, also known as Pakati, um, erupted. And uh, I spent most of yesterday watching news reports and things and trying to catch up on that. Just awful for all of the people involved. And uh, my heart goes out to all of those people and their families who are today sort of picking up the pieces. I know what that's like. I went through the earthquakes in Christchurch. To have something like that happen to you, yeah, feeling quite somber today on behalf of all of those people. Okay, so I've come to the tee off from the road here. Looks like I'm heading straight over through some farmland, so let's go and get started for today. to walk through a paddock full of I don't even know if they were young bulls they might have just been girl cows but they were getting a little bit agitated with me there started mooing and all sorts at me and I basically had to run up a hill okay I didn't run because I've got a backpack on but still freaked me out a little bit so hopefully I don't have to do that too many more times so I've just come from over there and walked up and around over this little bridge and then I'll be going down this track here I think winding around and heading back out over that way this is uh, quite a good section of the track the bit I've just come down treacherous I think you'd want to seriously consider whether or not you want to come down this track if it has just been raining very very heavily some of the parts of this track are so steep and very very slippery underfoot it's all clay so if you know anything about clay you know that the second you put your foot down it just slides out from underneath you and then on top of that there are obstacles across the track specifically vines and ferns and trees I was clinging on to trees and whatever I could cling on to basically just to hang on for dear life so I didn't go sliding down the slope so anyway still enjoying it at the moment <laughs> we'll see how I feel in another hour I've only been going for about an hour today. I already feel like I need a bit of a mental health break. So that's the hill I've just come down. I um, think I must have walked up and along this ridge and then sort of switched back down this side here and then emerged, where is it, about there? Somewhere? Navigation in this last little stretch back down from that hill, uh, that one there, has been terrible. I haven't been able to see the markers because either the bush has been too high or they just haven't been there. We came down that hill and just around uh, the bend there and there was a fence with, well it was tape actually, like a tape with orange triangles on it and I stood there and I thought to myself, I wonder if that means I'm supposed to cross this or follow it down. Well I looked at my map, my map said to carry on going straight so I carried on going straight and then I ended up walking around a big um, uh, you know excavator machine basically because they were digging up the hillside and when I got around there I was like this is not right but there were triangles along the fence line and sure enough one of the workmen came over the top and said you were supposed to follow that fence down where the orange triangles are and I said well there was no sign there to say follow this fence down and my map said to carry on going straight anyway he told me to carry on going because I was pretty much all the way around and they knew I was there so I was safe enough but even still I came to the top of the hill there after I had gotten around the excavator and not an orange triangle in sight and then I made my way down to the stile because I figured there's no way they'd put a stile there if it wasn't on the trail and there's an orange marker on that far post there the far post 
not the near post that you can see from the top of the hill, the far post, which is obscured by the tree that I'm currently standing under. That was a little bit of a rant, I know. I've relied so far on the TA app for my navigation. I will be getting gut hooked tonight once I get a, a half decent Wi-Fi connection because gut hook has all of this stuff in it. So I'm going to carry on over this style now. <laughs> Actually, whilst I'm on that note ranting about apps, I should mention that I am using the iOS version of the TA app, not the Android version. And I believe because I've seen the Android version that the Android version is a lot better than mine. Mine, even though I've downloaded all the topo maps, once I zoom in past a certain level, I can't see them unless I'm connected to the internet. And I have my phone on airplane mode a lot out here. So if you're on iOS, don't bother with it. Just go with gut hook. All right, here's our second suspension bridge of the trail. Came down that way, wound through here, came through this stand of kahikatea trees and then sort of made my way uh, roughly up the fence line actually that you can see to cut back over this stile here. And over on this side of the fence is the road leading to Tikwiti. And just over there, I believe, is Tikwiti itself. I'm off this way. It looks like I've got to try and get over that fence somehow. There's no style that I can see. No, nope, that was lucky I actually found a style a little bit further back up the road. I'd gone the wrong way. Again. I'm going to see if I can video this for you because this is just what today has been like. This is every step today has been up hills this steep. I mean, great views, but so steep. I've decided to hike into Tikawiri, um on the unofficial trail route instead of the official trail route, and that's because I'm just sick to death of trying to find the trail. It's taking me forever every single time I get to a stile or a junction to figure out where to go because you just can't see the markers and it's not obvious. I just walked down the airstrip and climbed over a stile. There was an orange marker on the stile, got over the other side, not an orange marker anywhere to be seen. So I looked at my map, walked down the fence line because that's where the route on the map said to go, came down to the bottom, no stiles to cross, said I needed to cross over the road and then get back into the pasture land on the other side, no stiles to cross on the other side either. So I carried on walking down the fence line a little bit, nothing down there, I turned around, I came back up a hill um, to the same place, uh, managed to come through a gate, walked back up the road, I'm probably 200 meters up the road now and have just found this style. It's nowhere near where the route says it should be. And on the other side of the road, just behind me, uh, there, uh, is the style that I should have come down. Not visible from the top at all. So the route, basically it goes over a style at the bottom of the paddock here, and then it's gonna go down into a little valley. Then it's gonna climb up that hill there it's going to follow the fence line. It's going to climb up another hill to get to a mast point or a high point, which is only about 264 meters, but this is almost vertical climbing. And then it's going to come back down the other side. I just do not see the point of doing that when I can walk up this road and just be on the state highway in half an hour or so. So that's what I'm going to do. It's probably taken me two hours to walk about 
three kilometers. So it'll be interesting comparing notes with some of the other hikers to see how they found it. Alrighty, so I just arrived here at the Hunts Farm Backpackers, I think it is, in Tikawiti. The lovely Emma picked me up from New World in Tikawiti so I didn't have to walk up the massive hill, which is great. And she even picked me up an ice cream. So I'm just going to settle in here. I think Paul's going to join me maybe tonight, but then it might only be just us. And um, yeah, cook some dinner a little bit later, do some laundry again. I just want to wash all my hiking clothes again and have a shower and then I will be set for bed. Kia ora, good morning. Had a beautiful stay here last night um, at the Hunts Farm Backpackers. Uh, I paid $20 to sleep in a bunk room last night and that gave me access to a flushing toilet and a shower beautiful kitchen, had a wonderful dinner there, got in quite early as well, about 3.30, so plenty of time in the afternoon to take advantage of the free Wi-Fi, and uh, yeah, it was just amazing. I could have easily stayed there for a rest day today, but just important to keep pushing on at this stage. So this morning, Emma dropped me back off at New World, did a quick lunch resupply, and uh, then very quickly got moving, walked past the old Colin Mead statue, uh, one of our very, very great all backs rugby players and then also past the shearing statue so Tikawiri is actually the sheep shearing capital of New Zealand that's what it's known for and walked down the road a tiny little way and saw my first road sign with the place name Topo on it um, and also a road sign with the timber trail on it too so uh, walking to the Mangokewa North campsite today where I'll stay tonight and then on to the start of the timber trail tomorrow which is really quite exciting uh, looking forward to the walk today but uh, I think it might be a little bit tricky and steep in some places but I'm hoping uh, not quite as bad as yesterday looks like I might be getting wet feet first in the morning okay not actually getting wet feet I am going up this way there's a little track through there Phew, thank goodness. My hopes of keeping my feet wet have been dashed. It's another one of those days of um, walking through head high grass. <laughs> Although this particular section is a lot better than what I've just been walking through. It just slows down your progress. Apparently nobody's heard of a weed trimmer in this part of the country. <laughs> it is pretty, but it would be really nice to get a little way down the trail before having to walk through head high grass one morning. I took the opportunity of having a good internet connection last night to finally download Gut Hook. And uh, I am glad I did. So I just came to a junction back there. Three possible routes, no trail markers. Uh, luckily in Gut Hook there was a comment um, on the little icon showing that there was a bridge back there to say, follow the track to the right and hug the river. So yeah, so far, really appreciate Gut Hook. <laughs> This Mangaokewa reserve track this morning has been just beautiful. Lots of little waterfalls along the way and an actual proper formed track through the forest which has been really really nice but oh my hay fever is going off today. I did have my tablet this morning but there's something in the air today which is really messing with it. The trail navigation ferry strikes again. One of these signs is Nobo and the other one is Sobo. 
I have no idea which one. I'm at a forked junction. Track that way. Track that way. And obviously the track I've just come from. just stopped for a mental health break because for the last half an hour I've been sidling along a massive hill with about 15 centimeters worth of track to walk on and in some places there is no track there's just a drop down to the stream there's been no rain here for three days and my feet are still covered in mud because it's boggy everywhere it's like a swamp it's beautiful but god just one foot wrong and it could all end disastrously. It just terrifies me. I just climbed up that hill there. Yeah. God, that was steep. And in places, you know, like I could just put an arm out in front of me, not even fully extended, and uh, touch the slope in front of me. That's how steep it was. I'm not in pain. I'm not miserable, but it's just hard work. Real, real hard work even on the days when you think it's going to be easy. <sighs> Alright, so I've just come across this sign. I'm not too sure where the actual trail goes because once again, no signs. But I think it sort of goes down here and follows the bank around. I think there's a bridge over here somewhere. So this is saying cross the stream up here. I think there's a log and basically follow it all the way around on that side. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so this is the bridge that it's asked us to come up across and I can see an orange marker a little bit further up um, attached to a fence post. Nice little bridge. Two thirty, and I've still got eight and a half kilometers to go. My hay fever is still playing up. It's probably a good job there's nobody else around because I just hit bottom again. I know now that these are tramping tracks, but even a tramping track, I don't see the point in having a track where it's along the side of a hill and you can't even put your foot down without being in serious danger of sliding down the hill. That's not a track to me. And thank goodness it hasn't been raining, is all I keep thinking, because today would be so dangerous and it probably would take me 12 hours to get through today. My legs are a mess, quite frankly. Let's see if you can see any of this. I got rid of the heat rash, only to today be walking through something that is irritating my skin and now I've got all these itchy blisters all over my legs and my arms and I've just been walking through blackberry bushes but if it's not blackberry bushes then it's gorse and yet I'm walking still 
And I don't understand that. I don't understand how when I hate it so much, I just keep walking. So I made it to Mangokewa North Road. Um, I think it's about three kilometers from here to the campsite. It's so hot again. No shade along the road obviously and I've nearly finished my two liters of water so I'm absolutely gasping. Can't wait to get to the campsite and just rinse my legs off. I'm pretty sure it's um, started as a, an allergic reaction to something and then uh, it turned into maybe a little bit of heat rash so I think I might be at the campsite already actually. No, it's not the uh, campsite that I'm after but there is a campsite here so if you want to camp a little bit closer to the end of the track there then you can stay at this place. It looks like they've got water and a little shelter there, maybe a bit of a toilet down here. I can't wait to be in the forest for five days. Today has been very, very mentally exhausting. There's been a few times today where I've been in tears for one reason or another. The trail is not going to get me. I am not giving up yet. I have goals and I haven't met them yet. You can keep throwing this stuff at me, Te Araroa, but I ain't given up yet. <sighs> Alright guys, until tomorrow.